So you were talking about the whole custom order that you're doing. Why don't you tell the viewers about the custom colorways that you offer on your site? Because that's pretty unique. I really enjoy working with custom colorways. There's just something about giving somebody their vision, like mm -hmm. helping them realize what they have in their brain. Like they might think, I really just want something that reminds me of this harbor that I visited in Europe on my honeymoon. Um, that sort of thing is really fun for me because the yarn is so meaningful to mm -hmm. the people who it. It's not just another skein of, you know, nice green yarn. It's something that really means something to them. And when I can pro promote or provoke an emotional response in somebody with my work, that's when I really enjoy it. Yeah, that so, has to be the best. Yeah, they contact me and say, oh, this is exactly what I was hoping for. And, you know, I'm going to knit, knit something for my grandmother or my child or you know, whatever. I really love that. Do you, so do you get like, uh, like, you know, uh, paragraphs describing it or photos or a little bit of both or? Sometimes both. I had people send me things that they want me to match. Okay. Somebody sends me, you know, their family tartan sash. Oh, wow. They want a colorway that matched a tartan. I've had people send me Towels that they found at Target and that they, <laughs> and that they love. <laughs> like cholera. It's great because that's we're so cool. an emotional response to the colors of yeah. the towel. And that, I mean, it's pretty much a guarantee that they'll love, hopefully, they'll love the, the yarn that I make. So I get that. People send me things sometimes. Sometimes people um, do describe things, and then I go through a process of creating these digital swatches for them so they can see exactly what colors and in what combinations I'm going to put on the skin of yarn. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. And so what's next for you? What What are you doing? Do you have some new colors up your sleeve or? Always. Always. I always have new colors. <laughs> How can you not, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's a given. Um, you know, I run three pretty sizable yarn clubs and I just get such out of doing it. I really do. And so that is a challenge in terms of I have to create three, three new colorways every month for those. And they can't just be, you know, any old thing. Because I've had people in my yarn clubs for over two years and they, they know that <laughs> <laughs> that is too close to whatever. So I feel this obligation to my longtime customers to come up with new and fresh things that they've never seen before. So I'm always coming up, coming up with new things in that regard, but I also am working on our fall collection right now. In the studio the last three days, I've been working on the fall, mm -hmm. the fall collection, which is very exciting. It's kind of it's odd fun. to be working on with fall colors during the summer heat. It is. Just like it's odd to go and see all of the Halloween decorations in the store in July, yeah. Yeah. it's weird to be like, it's 90 thousand degrees in here and I'm thinking about uncomfortable <laughs> tones. Um, so it is, but I, it has to be done. I can't just start thinking about fall in October when the weather turns cold. Yeah, right. That would be too late. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see that because fall is one of my favorite seasons. My birthday's in October, so of oh, course. So those I'll colors are exciting for me. Um, Oh, I was going to ask you, I know that you're a knitter because we've talked already, but I like to ask this question to um, my sponsors is, why do you knit? Oh, there's a huge variety of reasons. I started knitting because my grandmother gave me all of her knitting needles and all of her yarn, and she passed away in a car accident, mm -hmm. and so I literally inherited a huge, like a trunk full of knitting stuff. And that was really, you know, I learned to knit when I was 12, but it, I, it never really clicked in my mind. It was never a big, you know, something that I really enjoyed or that I really made a lot of sense of until I inherited these things when I was about 20. Mm -hmm. And I started knitting things for my nieces and nephews, and then I started knitting things for my own children. And so for me, knitting is very meaningful in that way. Both of my grandmothers were knitters. Um, so I find meaning in it. Mm -hmm. I do. I enjoy it. It's meditative. It's relaxing. And then, of course, I love seeing the end product. Yeah. I mean, it. And, and I love working with really beautiful yarn. That's huge. like seeing what's next around the next row is always very interesting. Yeah. 
I agree. I have that same connection where my grandmother used to knit, and so it kind of brings me into their world mm -hmm. in a different time. So I always think about when people have to knit to yeah. keep their families alive. Your mm -hmm. family has to have mittens. Your yes. family has to have Socks more and yeah. Oh, you know, or your children can die of hypothermia. You know, mm -hmm. we don't we don't live in those times, but I. I, I think that's really interesting. I love being connected to that. Yeah, me too. Very cool. So you said you learned to knit at 12. Mm -hmm. Who taught you how to knit? Your grandma? I, I, no, my grandmother was mostly blind. Mm -hmm. One of them was. And the other one I asked many times, and she, her response was, no, no, I'm always too nervous. I'm too nervous. <laughs> and she forgot, I can't sit still and show you how to do this. Yeah. She wanted to have her copy, and she was one of those people who who just had to be moving all the time. There was no way for her to sit still. And it was today she would have been diagnosed with ADHD, no doubt. <laughs> and it was her that was her self medication. It really yeah. was. It's like her hands had to be moving at all times. Um, so no, when I was twelve, I talked my mother into signing me up for a class at a yarn shop, and I took the bus down to the class and I walked in and I was a little dismayed to see that I was the only child there but all of the other women were in their 30s and 40s and they were, they were drinking wine and gossiping about their husbands and I'm just you know sitting there trying to cast on with my heart <laughs> and I, I didn't get it. Um, it I did not did not pick it up as quickly as the other grown-ups did. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was how I knit. I took this knitting class at this yarn shop and um, tried knitting and knit a couple of holy dishcloths. And but I but I hung on to the little booklet that we took home from the class. And then when I got to be in college, I started doing a little bit more with it. And then, like I said, when I inherited this big batch of yarn, is when I really started doing more of it. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. I don't have anything special like that. I learned when I was twenty something, so it was <laughs> what's currently on your what's currently twelve and hang out with women who are drinking yeah. more. Yeah. Was it different back then? Was it was it more older ladies or is it like it is now where there was still younger ladies in the class too? They were all in their thirties and forties. Mm -hmm. To me. Mm -hmm. In my mind, when I was in twelve, mind, yeah. that's how old they were. And yeah. who knows how old they really were. But they <laughs> all seemed to be, you know, wanting to knit these big elaborate things. And I was, just, I, my goal was to knit my mom a country blue dishcloth in a color that matched our kitchen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did a terrible job at it. <laughs> I'm sure your mom <laughs> loved it, though. Moms are like that. I, I know she did, but it really was different back then. It was, you went to the yarn shop and you bought what the owner told you to buy. Oh, yeah. Needles. I still have those needles. Those were good needles. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably worth some money now. <laughs> yeah, I remember at the time when I was 12, like 50 years ago, they cost $7. And in my mind, that was a lot, a lot of, of money. money. Yeah. Many needles. You can still buy needles cheaper than that. But I, I paid seven dollars for a pair of needles, and I still own them. So I guess you know you get what you pay for. But no, you bought what the shop owner told you to buy. Yeah. Here's the yarn. Pick which color you want. You get the choice of these four colors. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs>